guys, thanks for stopping by my Peace Garage. Well, today we're going to talk all about lifters. We're going to talk about the hydraulic flat tappet lifter, and we'll talk about the hydraulic roller lifter, when you should choose them, the differences between them, the advantages, pros, cons. We'll take one apart, we'll see how they work, and then we'll put them in, make sure they're installed properly. Let's get started. Well, let's start with this. Here we have some lifters in their natural habitat in the lifter valley. And you can see there's an obvious difference between the two. First of all, we have the roller lifter here with the rollers on the bottom and the flat hydraulic lifter here. The first obvious difference is the height. You can see that the roller lifter is considerably higher. That's due to the roller on the bottom here and you need a link bar. The reason you need a link bar on there is that this roller has to stay in the same position. You don't want these lifters rotating because you can understand if this is riding on the cam here on the lobe and this turns this way, all it will do is make a bunch of scrap metal. So this link bar holds them together. Sometimes these lifters, when they're in here, instead of having a link bar like this, there'll be a, a piece of metal that goes around here, it's called a dog bone, that just sits on the flat to hold them from rotating. And then there's a piece of metal that gets bolted in, which is called a spider, and that just holds the, the uh, link bar down so nothing comes apart when it's rotating. So we have the two, two different lifters here. Now, the big question is, when should I choose a roller, hydro, uh, ro roller hydraulic versus a flat tappet hydraulic cam and uh, roller lifter setup? And the first consideration is cost. If you go with a roller cam setup with roller lifters, you're talking about adding seven to $800 to the engine just by going with something like this. And the question is, is it worth it to you? Yes, these will make more horsepower, and you can get more out of your engine with this than a standard flat hydraulic lifter, but the gains are, are pretty substantial, maybe 50, 60 horsepower, and uh, there's many reasons for that. First of all, because you have this roller on here, there's less friction on the valve train. When this is roller is rolling on the camshaft, there's no resistance versus the flat one that has to ride on the camshaft so there's friction as this is riding. So you get friction from this. That's number one. Number two is that the roller gives you some, uh, different advantages uh, for, for lift. For example, when I, if you look at this, let's start with this one. With the solid hydraulic, this, the lift of the cam, let's pretend my finger's a cam and here's the cam coming around and it's lifting up this valve like this, this is lifting up this valve. This angle, or the lift, how fast the valve opens, it can only be so fast because if you can imagine this, I'll exaggerate it, you don't want the lifter to be on an angle riding on the corner, you, can, you can't lift that way. So the, the lobe of the cam can only be angled so much in order to lift this lifter up, okay? It can only be so steep versus the roller lifter where instead of having the same lift or how quickly the valve will open rolling over that that roller there I can now take this angle and I can make it a lot sharper so I can open this valve a lot faster and close it a lot faster than I can with the flat one so that's why you get more horsepower out of this you get more effective duration out of this because I can open the valve faster I can hold it open longer I can get more lift out of it because I can put more lift on this and I can close it faster. So since the valve is open faster, longer, open more, and can close it faster, you'll get more horsepower in. The engine is nothing more than an air pump. The faster I can get air and fuel in, hold it open, shut the valve faster, and burn it, the more horsepower I'm going to get versus a slow one. Okay, those are. Th those are the, the, the basic differences in why you get more with a roller setup versus the flat setup. The other thing is if you have a flat hydraulic, whether it's a solid, now if this was a solid lifter, it would simply be solid. There would be nothing to it. This is hydraulic because it's got the hydraulic assembly in the center here. And what that means is when you put that in the lifter bore here, like that, and you have your push rod, the push rod goes in there and the lifter acts like a pump. It pumps oil to the top of the engine. If you look at the end of the push rod, the push rod has a hole in it and that's how the oil gets from the 
lifter to the top of the engine. As the lifter lifts up and down, goes up and down, pumps the oil, and you get uh, the oil to the top of the engine and the valve train. But, of course, I don't have something handy here. Let me get something handy here. If I take this lifter out of here, of course, nothing's ever simple, right? These must be broken in. When you first start up a, a solid, uh, solid uh, lifter engine, this has to be broken in, which means that this surface riding on the camshaft has to be broken in for hardness. If you don't break this in with gradual increased spring pressure from your valves, you will end up putting too much pressure on this and you can wipe out the lobe of your cam in five, ten minutes. Also, the lifter bore and the lifter have to be extremely clean. I always talk about cleanliness when you build your engine. You want to have these things extremely clean because if you do put this in and there's anything in there that's going to prevent this from moving up and down smoothly, if this gets tight and it gets stuck down, you're going to wipe out the cam and if it can't open properly, you're going to have vacuum problems. There's going to be fighting that. Before you know it, you completely ruined your cam and you'll have to start all over again. So, cleanliness and installing these is a very important. Now, let's take this apart and I'll show you what, what it means, what happens with that hydraulic, why it's called hydraulic, and how that pumps oil to the top. If you're rebuilding your lifters and you're just rebuilding your engine, you want to rebuild them, take them apart and clean if they're in good shape, you can, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. Uh, and you don't need any special tools, just some needle nose pliers and a screwdriver. But the first thing to notice is, first of all, there's a hole in the lifter, and that hole in that lifter is how the oil gets in. So this is sitting, this lifter is sitting in the engine, and it's sitting in the bore, and there's oil pressure coming this way. The oil pressure surrounds the lifter, that's why you have this little indentation, and pressure is forced through that hole, and that's how oil gets inside the lifter. So let's take this apart. First you can see there's a little clip in there. And what I'll do is I'm just going to take my pliers and I'm just going to disengage that clip from the groove. And it's not very hard to do. Sometimes you can use a screwdriver and it's easier. So you get that tip out of there and you see how that lifts out. That tip will lift out. I'll do the other side. Oh, there we go. Of course the thing shut off. This can come off, come off pretty easy. Now when that comes off, we have our, have our lifter. So it's important to grab that clip when you take it off so it doesn't shoot away. You don't want to lose that thing. Now, as we take this apart, the first thing that's going to come out is the plunger. And this is the top of the plunger. And uh, in that plunger, this is the where the lifter sits. I'm sorry, the push rod. The push rod sits in here. There's just a hole in the bottom. That's how the oil gets through to that. Underneath that, there's kind of this metering plate. And this metering plate has certain size holes in there that control how much, how fast the oil will get through, how much bleed back there can be. So this is a customizable part if needed. But this is a standard, standard lifter. Next we will have our piston and on that piston is a spring and this is what pushes up and down so when you talk about hydraulic pump this is if you see this how this pushes up and down that if I take these and pushes up and down you can see that the lifter pumps up and down so I'll take this back out and you have the plunger and the piston and this also has a hole in it that hole the oil comes in the lifter through that hole. It gets distributed around the inside. There's a there's an inside. You can see there's sort of a uh, a groove on the inside of the lifter. Then the oil goes around this groove and gets pumped into the inside of the piston, which goes inside here. That's what gets pumped up to the top. And on the bottom you have this check valve, and this is what bleeds down. The spring here. If you take the spring off, gently take that spring off. You have this assembly, and underneath here is another spring and a check valve. And if I gently take this one off, take off the bottom to that, okay, we have in here, here is the check. This little thing is the check. I'll set it down so you can see it. That little thing is the check, which sits against this orifice there, that opening in there. So this sits against that. 
and that gets pushed against the bottom of that is the inside here is a spring. It's a real small spring. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see, I'll see if I can take it out of there and put it back in. Yeah. Real, real small spring. See how small that spring is? That's just a, like a check valve spring. And I'll put that right back in there. And you can put your the plate for the check valve, sit that in there. When you're putting this back together, after you clean it. So if you're cleaning it, just clean it and put it back together. And then it just goes right back on there just like that. So you can see how you have this check valve at the bottom of that. And if I were to reach in here with a screwdriver, you may not be able to see it. But as I push on that check valve on the bottom, that's how it opens and closes. It's pretty simple. It's a simple device. Now that, then you have your spring that goes in. I'm sorry, spring goes on the back. <laughs> spring goes on there, and the spring goes back in the lifter. And as this pumps, you can see how it sucks oil in here, then it sucks oil inside here, and as this works as a pump, the bottom check valve shuts off, the bottom check valve shuts off, and when your valve comes to, the cam goes and pushes up on the lifter, it compresses that, pumps oil through the metering plate that's in there, then it comes through the head of the lifter, which is where the push rod resides and sits against there. All this sits together, and as a push rod sits in here and pushes, it acts as a pump. It pumps oil up to the top of the engine. That is how a lifter works. And I, like I said, is if you're if you're doing this and you're cleaning your lifters, to do them one at a time takes your uh, take care of them. Make sure you have all your parts. You keep them clean because that spring that shut off. I'm not going to search for it right now, it's, but it's, it's on the floor here. You don't want to lose that. That's the second time that's happened to me in 30 years, that spring shut off like that. Uh, if you clean these things off, that spring, so you just want to put your finger over there when you disengage it so you don't lose your spring. But then you just push this down and put that spring in there. It acts like a clip, and then put it back together. So that is how a lifter works. That's how it's disassembled. It's a pretty simple device. Now, let's go install our lifters and make sure they're installed correctly. We can start this process pretty simple. First, do a quick examination and look at them, make sure nothing was damaged in shipping. Link bar is in good shape. Everything seems to be okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip them in a mineral spirits just to clean them off of any assembly lube or anything that might be uh, inside there just to make sure that they're clean. Now I'm just doing this in the lifter valley here just to make it easy to show you, but I'm going to do it for the rest of them outside. Just shake them off and I'll blow it off with some air. And then I will take them and put them in some motor oil. You can use the same motor oil that you're building the engine with. It doesn't need to be anything special. Just completely coat them to make sure they go in smoothly. And once they're completely coated, just take and drop them into your lifter bores very gently. And you make sure the link bar is facing the correct orientation. These link bars face towards the center of the of the uh, lifter valley. Sometimes they're on the outside, I've seen that, but just check to make sure. But most of the time this thing goes on the inside. Now I can continue with the rust. After your lifters are installed, give them all a quick move up and down to make sure they're all moving smoothly. You don't feel any binding anywhere, which is critical. If you feel any binding, stop because you might have a problem. And they all feel nice and smooth. Nothing's holding any of them up. So they're all good. Okay, we're all set. So there you go guys, everything you wanted to know about hydraulic lifters. How to clean them, how to take them apart, how they work, and how to put them in. Now if this is your first time stopping by, please click on subscribe so you can follow along. Click on that bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload a video. And thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.